Hi, and welcome back to Struggle Security, where we are normalizing struggling in cybersecurity. Where really one of my major purposes is to help you with those struggles, to give you different advice, to give you different tips and tricks. As I've been in the cybersecurity field for almost 10 years, and I'm here to just give you information and to help you with those struggles as you are going forward in your cybersecurity career. I'm gonna be giving you several different resources here where we're gonna be going over what you call self-reported cybersecurity salaries. What does that mean, self-reported? That means that individuals like myself, maybe like you, right? People who are in the field are going online to different forums, to different websites, and actually saying what their compensation is. So for example, somebody who might be a cybersecurity architect at a different company, right? They will go online to these anonymous forums and say, hey, this is what I was offered. And let me tell you the value in that. The value in that is that that ain't arms you with information to be able to negotiate your own salaries and to be adequately compensated or at times overcompensated for the cybersecurity roles that you're going into. So I'm gonna be going over several different resources here that will help you with those salary negotiations and just really giving you a good understanding of what compensation there is in the cybersecurity field here in 2022. Let's jump right into it. The first one I'm gonna start off with here is what you call Fishbowl. And Fishbowl is a place, and let's look at their, their mission here. Let me zoom in a little bit. It says, our mission is to help professionals and companies get ahead by enabling helpful and constructive conversations. This is pretty much a forum here, right? I'm a part of Fishbowl. I have a Fishbowl account, and that's kind of how you kind of gain access to here is that Fishbowl is kind of constructed in what you call different bowls that you see here. And it tells you about the different bowls that you can have conversations with other professionals. So the bowls that I'm a part of are the consulting, all things points, right? Getting points off of certain travel things or um, compensation, consulting exit opportunities, personal investment chatter, all types of bowls. But the ones that we're gonna be focusing on today is the bowls talking about salary or compensation. And I'm gonna point you to one of these, which comes from this post here. And this one is Deloitte, right? It says Deloitte salary survey gathered through anonymous fishbowl users last year. And this is from a 2019 posting. And when it says Deloitte or any of these consulting firms, it's really talking about these big four firms. And the big four consulting firms are the PricewaterCooper, Deloitte, Ernst & Young, and KPMG. This one specifically is that of Deloitte. So they talk about a salary survey and over 1,470 res responses, all types of salaries that can arm you with having better compensation discussions. So as you scroll down, this is from the author and boom, it jumps to a large spreadsheet that has all types of salaries there. So here you see here at the top, um, this is from the timestamp, right? August 25th, 2019. We see what their previous salary was, was at 140,000 as a base salary. Um, this person is a manager. Um, it tells about the, the years in their level. And then what their new salary is, is that they look like they got a bump here, right? 140K to 152K um, in their salary. Tells them about their level. Tells them even about the, the, the group or the organization that, that they're in their proficiency and all types of things, right? What, the, what their bonus was too. Now you can drill down here and look for different, let's see if I can search cyber, right? So when I look at cyber, right? Cyber roles, I just did a control F, right? To search for uh, the different cyber and the group within Deloitte, this person is in a cyber risk capacity. So we're seeing a cybersecurity salary here. Their role is a consultant within Deloitte. And then if you keep going over, we can see their salary. Their salary is that of 97K800, so $97,800 as their salary. Again, this can really help you in having those salary discussions. So I'm gonna leave this with you. Again, I'm gonna have all of these salaries there within the chat for you, or there within the comments, there for you to review your, yourselves. Okay, let's go to our next one here. This one is a little bit different, right? This one isn't necessarily for our Americans, for, but this is for individuals who might be international. 
So this one is called the H-1B visa salary database. And this one is recent um, up to 2022. And let's just jump in here and look for roles that deal with cybersecurity. So let's go ahead and search. I'm just gonna put cyber. Well, let's put, I'm just gonna put cyber here and see. You don't have to put anything for the employer. You don't have to put anything for the city. You can put it for, looks like they only have it up to 2021 right now, which is okay, right? It's still, it's, it's still January. So let's go ahead and do a search and see what roles are popping up here. And boom, we're seeing a whole lot here. Show me the money. It's all here, it's all here. So we see different roles within different organizations. Some of these might look familiar to you, these, these organizations, SAP or Citizens Financial Group. And we see some different titles for these roles. The Cyber Defense Specialist, the Cyber Defense Tech Expert, right? We're seeing some base salaries, which means just the overall, like the foundation of your salary. This doesn't include bonuses. This doesn't include equity. This is just the base salary that these individuals are being given. And also the area. Right. So we see some pretty good salaries here. Right. 98 K, 113 K for some of these cyber roles. And this also gives you a good understanding of what some of these roles offer. Um, so you might be looking at a difference in a cyber DevOps engineer in comparison to that of a cyber consultant. So you might this might be able to help you kind of fashion your path within cybersecurity. Like where am I trying to go or what roles might give a higher compensation? Um, if that's your major driver, this person is a cyber defense senior specialist bringing in at 153K as their base salary. But we also can see some of the different locations because location is a very good identifier of the compensation that you'll be receiving from organizations. So they're in California, which the cost of living in California is much higher than that of maybe a Oak Bridge, New, New Jersey. So they would be receiving a higher compensation here. Let's let's keep going a little bit more. And you thought that it was just this, this top section. No, 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 no. It's plenty of cyber roles, plenty of information that if you're a H-1B visa, these are salaries being offered with organizations and these are self-reported. These are people who have actually received offers what great information you have here to arm you with the negotiating power to know what these these uh these these roles are offering let's go to our next one and it's kind of a familiar topic that we were speaking of this one is from a website called big4transparency.com and just like i was mentioning those big four organizations pricewater cooper deloitte ernst and young kpmg they are big players in the cybersecurity realm um, so this is another website that is self-reported and it's nicely laid out here for some of these roles, right? We see from KPMG, Ernst & Young, we see some, some other ones that might not be exactly identifiable with the C, C Biz or BDL USA. So let's go ahead, I know I'm zooming here, let me slow down. Um, we see here that these are a lot of different roles, but we wanna zoom in on the cybersecurity roles. So one thing that I put in here was, I believe cyber is what gets, gets us the hits here. So you just throw cyber and they give you roles for cybersecurity, cyber risk regulatory, cybersecurity and digital trust. These are the salaries and this isn't only for individuals in the US. This is also for see KPMG or PwC Australia, um, PwC Canada. And again, as you scroll over, you can see their years of experience. That, that's another good one, right? You need to know how many years of experience individuals have been able to obtain in order for them to get certain salaries. So years of experience, they have certifications. So there's, some people have JDs or some people are C, CPAs. Um, and then of course, the salaries are there. They even, <laughs> they're even given their, their, their ages and their ethnicities and their genders. You know, this is self-reported, it's it's anonymous. Um, so you can put this information in or you can take this information um, and see what, what you can do with it because this might apply to you. You might see that, hey, this person has been able to get this and I can get similar salaries. So boom, right? As we go down, we have several, many resources, many salaries, many areas. Align this with where you are, right? Align this to the city that you're in and gain a better understanding of what salaries in cybersecurity are being offered for that area, okay? 
That is big4transparency.com. Now let's jump over to big tech. Let's jump over to big tech. And this website is called levels.fyi. And this website is typically used for a lot of software engineers. So let's jump in here and let's just go to Google, right? We're looking for roles, cybersecurity roles within Google. And I wanna point out a couple of different things here, but let me back out. Let's go to, to overview. And I'm just looking at different roles as a whole because many times people don't come into big tech organizations trying to find cybersecurity roles. And they're typically not looking at software engineering roles that they, it could be a software security engineer, but they're typically not looking at the software engineering roles. I'm going to tell you where I've seen a lot of, a lot of cybersecurity professionals going to big tech is typically through this technical program manager title. And these are just titles that are within Google and other organizations in big tech, um, places like uh, Facebook with Apple and Amazon. And that is where we're going to drill down here. I'm going to point out some things about this technical program manager role. And let's start with the levels. The levels are associated with different experience levels or really levels come from the way that you've interviewed with these organizations for roles. So within Google, if you interview very well and they see a certain level of proficiency or experience that will dictate the level that you'll come into Google at. And of course it goes from L3, which is a lower level and it goes higher and higher and higher. An L3 is typically like a, like an entry level individual, maybe someone fresh out of college. Um, L4 is someone who might've had some experience, maybe mid-level type of role. L5 is typically a senior level role for a TPM. Um, L6 of course is principal higher and then the higher and higher you go. All right. So many cybersecurity professionals come into, uh, big tech organizations like Google um, through the technical program manager, or even you might even see a program manager role because a lot of these salaries are aligned. So let's just jump into it because we're not looking at trying to see what the salaries are for all of big tech, but what we're looking for are those cyber security salaries. So here you see the company name, you see the date in which the offer was given, right? This one was from 122. 2022, which is very recent um, from the time of the filming of this video, what this was like last week or so. Um, we see the level, right? That one's associated with mainly an entry level type of role. And that tag under here, this is the, the, the type of capacity that they're working in. We see research, general, cloud, privacy. Um, and then we see the year of experience. Like I said, an L3 person has a total of one year of experience, zero years at Google. And they were able to negotiate a 133k um, salary um, with a 32k stock or um, equity, and then they have a sign-on bonus, typically a sign-on bonus here of 20k. Okay, that's just a breakdown of what the roles look like. But let's go ahead and look for the cyber roles. Cyber. So it's typically you won't typically see cyber. Um, you won't even see cyber security if I can spell spell correctly. But what you will see is that of security when you're looking at a lot of these big tech organizations. And those are the roles that we're looking at here. So let's just start from the top. Let's just look at one of these and then we'll go on to our next resource. We're looking at a Google offer in Sunnydale, California or Sunnyvale, California. This one was from late last year, L6. So when I went over those levels, right, this one is a principal. This one is above a senior level. So very proficient at what they do. And that aligns with the years, years of experience. We see 15 years of experience. They're just coming into, into Google with one year. And again, it's in security and they have a base salary of a whopping 228 K base salary. This is their every two week take home check. Then they have a stock incentive and this is awarded typically four time or I'm sorry, uh, this is like a one time a year, but it's bro is broken up into four different uh, quarters of when they're receiving this 120 K. And then it looks like they had a sign on bonus of 40 K come to a whopping 338,000 as a total compensation for an L6 TPM technical program manager for Google. So I will leave this for you, for you to go deeper and deeper into some of these roles and for you to really understand like, Hey, what is the salary compensation that I can negotiate that I can get for my skill set 
and where I might want to go, right? So this gives you a view into your future if you're entry level or a transitioner in cybersecurity. Now let's go to our last resource and that's Glassdoor. I've introduced Glassdoor in another one of my videos. And here I'm just gonna drill down because Palo Alto Networks is a cybersecurity organization, very popular. And we just, I just put in cybersecurity analysts here. And some of these roles that popped up or uh, here for the cybersecurity specialists, we're seeing here, and this one says low confidence, probably because they are, they are old, older submitted. And like I said, it's like from March 17th, 2021, right? And we're seeing one salary. So one individual has submitted a salary here and they're looking like they're getting between 111 to 121K. And this is for that of a cybersecurity specialist salary. So that is good. That's one of those salaries. Let's go back and um, let's put another cyber row here. Let's do a cybersecurity engineer. Okay, this is another one, right? Cloud security engineer. Cloud security or cloud is very popular these these days. And it looks like they're getting an average of 120,805 a year. So that's something that we're seeing here. Another self-reported salary specifically from that glass door website for Palo Alto Networks. So we have went over several different resources for individuals in the big four organizations people who are H-1B visas, and even individuals trying to get into um, big tech organizations. These are all self-reported and it covers a large gambit of cybersecurity roles. And I think that one thing that you can see is that cybersecurity fits into many different types of organizations and many different types of roles. I hope this has been valuable to you. I hope this is something that you can use in order to get the compensation that you want or even see where you're desiring to go. So right now we just, we just dispelled one of those struggles that you might have had. And if you have more questions, more comments, more concerns, subscribe, hit the bell and put in some comments there within the comment section. Ask me more questions, ask me of more information that you might want me to drill down into as it concerns those cybersecurity struggles where we're normalizing struggling in cybersecurity. Thank you. Thank you once again and come back again subscribe and hit the bell and I'll see you again for another video.